Hey everybody, Will here, and today I'm doing another quick upgrade to my Phantom 1. But before I do, I thought I'd answer one question that I've been getting quite a bit of about uh, the whole, all the Phantom stuff that I'm doing, and it's why do I have the Phantom 1? Um, why don't I have the Phantom 2 or one of the Phantom 2 Vision uh, quadcopters instead of this one? And also, a lot of people are asking me who are watching these videos and don't have any of them yet, which one should they get? And so to answer your question, why do I have the Phantom 1 first? Uh, and that is because I saw it on a really great sale last year. It was a Black Friday deal, and it was $3.99 for um, the kit, which even to this day is still a really great deal. I think it's around 500 still for the Phantom 1, and the Phantom 2 is around 800 or so, and then the Phantom um, Vision Plus is something like 1,000, 100 or 200 or something like that. But um, if you're just kind of looking to start into a hobby, and again, I didn't know anything about this when I bought it, so it was a really a, an impulse buy. Um, and that kind of, to me, $400, that range is a little bit more doable than $1,200. So that's why I have the Phantom 1. But to answer the question for people who don't have anything and are want, want to really get into it and think they'll be serious about it, which one should they get? Um, to compare it really quickly to the Phantom Vision, the Phantom Visions are really cool uh, to fly out of the box with really great aerial video. But if you are serious about video and you want to try doing some work, uh, professional work, you really should have the best camera you can get on it. And the Phantom 2 Visions camera, as great as it is, is not even the Hero 3, the GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition, which is the old version. And now I'm, it says it on here, Hero 3, but now I'm on to the Hero 4. This is the Hero 4 on here. And that completely blows the Phantom 2 Vision Plus cameras out of the water. I didn't even buy it just for this. I bought it because I use it for a lot of other video work. And I'm going to be buying a Hero 5 when it comes out and a Hero 6 when it comes out, right when it comes out. So um, it makes more sense to use those cameras rather than also you know, upgrading my heroes every single time they come out for all the other work I do. And then also having to upgrade uh, the camera on my drone every single time a better camera comes out. Uh, that's just a really great camera, and so the built-in stuff. Again, it's really great, and it's a lot easier, and you can fly and get amazing video out of the box. But if you're serious about video, you have to put a little more work into it. And uh, these cameras are just going to be better cameras. So that makes the vision kind of a waste, in my opinion, if you're serious about video. And then the next question is whether you should get a Phantom 1 or a Phantom 2. And I think at that point, again, unless you find a really amazing deal on one of the two of them, the Phantom 2 is probably going to be the better option. Now, the two models are very, very similar, and a lot of the differences um, come in the form of the propellers, for instance. I just basically took the Phantom 2 propellers and put them on the Phantom 1 propellers, and you eventually replace those anyway, so that's not really a big change. But the biggest change between the Phantom 1 and the Phantom 2 is going to be the battery. The Phantom 1 that I have in here right now has this small little compartment with a single 2200 milliamp battery, and the Phantom 2 has a much bigger 5400 milliamp battery. And this will give me about eight, with, with the gimbal and everything, will give me about eight minutes of flight time. And again, that bigger battery gets people closer to 20, which is a much more comfortable, reasonable flight time. So that right there is the biggest reason to get the Phantom 2 over the 1. However, in terms of battery, the one downside to that is that those batteries, those 5200 milliamp batteries, are pretty expensive. They're over $100 for the Phantom battery, and the reason for that is it kind of has a bunch of built-in features into the battery, including a battery level gauge and stuff like that. So they really get to inflate the price. Realistically, it makes sense, too, because it is kind of cool to have those things built into the battery compared to just a plain lithium polymer battery that you would throw in there um, like you would do with the Phantom 1. But again, the difference is that the price is really, really expensive for those batteries. I'm hoping to upgrade this to have the capacity of closer to 5,200 milliamp um, milliamps of power, but it's certainly not going to cost me the cost of that Phantom 2 battery. Now, apart from the batteries, there are, as I'm learning, a few differences between the Phantom 1 and Phantom 2, and um, that's coming actually as I am upgrading this now, and what I'm upgrading it to today is with this, which is the Mini iOSD, and OSD stands for on-screen display, and basically what this is going to do is it takes the information from the Phantom controller and it puts it in between my camera and my wireless video transmitter. So the video on the camera is still being recorded perfectly 
clear and without any information on it, but what I'm seeing on my controller is battery life, is the altitude I'm flying at, the speed I'm flying at, the distance away I am from my launch point. And those pieces of information can be hugely, hugely helpful when you're shooting. I had a friend who had the IOSD on his Phantom and it's just, it makes it so much easier just to stare at the screen and fly by looking at your shot, which gives you much, much better shots. But going back to Phantom 1 versus Phantom 2, is I was sad to learn after I got this that I cannot simply install the Mini iOS D onto the Phantom 1. What I need to do is upgrade it a little bit first. And if you look at the Phantom 1 versus the Phantom 2, you'll see on the legs here, and these legs are aftermarket legs, but um, you'll see a couple of antennas hanging down, and then you'll also see a compass here. But one thing that the Phantom 2 has that the Phantom 1 doesn't have is an additional port on one of the other legs, and that port is called a CAN bus port. And that is this connection right here on the Mini iOS D. And that's also used by a number of other things like gimbals use them um, and a few other devices. But that's a, a little extra port that the Phantom 2 has built in that the Phantom 1 doesn't. And it's not just a port, by the way. It's not just a matter of taking this and plugging it inside and opening it up. Um, it doesn't have what it needs to have to to drive that port. So to do that, I found out, we actually need one more device, and that is this. And that is going to be the uh, PMU V2. There's actually two ways to do it on the Phantom 1 if you want to upgrade it with the Mini iOS D. And that is with this module, and this is the PMU V2. And PMU stands for Power Management Unit. But you can see it has the CAN bus port on it, or the CAN bus port on it right there. So you can just plug it in there. But this has to go and be installed in there now. And it requires a little bit of soldering. Um, and there's also another option. Instead of this module, you can buy a whole upgrade board, which is just a circuit board, which replaces something in there that sits in there. Uh, but that requires a little bit more soldering. And I just thought, why not just go this route for this one? So um, a little bit of work. And as with anything else, we can get the Phantom 1 up to the Phantom 2. Uh, specs and usability, but if you're, this is just kind of a, a little bit of an annoying thing, and again, this was, these were about $60 each, so that's another $120, uh, $130 that I wish I didn't have to spend, but well, no, I, I'm upgrading it with the ISD, but that's, that's certainly another $60 or $70 that I didn't want to have to spend on this PMU V2, and it's a little bit more weight too and everything, so that's probably why at the end of the day, if you haven't bought a Phantom yet and kind of want to buy one, I'd probably recommend the Phantom 2. But uh, if you do have a Phantom 1, or you find a great deal on a Phantom 1, uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade it to this today, the Mini iOS D. So we're going to open it up now and make that happen. The first step is to open the shell of the Phantom to access the internal circuitry of the drone. Remove the GPS connector from the EXP port, as this will later be plugged into the PMU V2. Not to mention, you'll have a lot more room to work with the lid out of the way. One modification I made earlier was an external USB port for my NASA controller. This makes it a million times easier to plug the controller into a computer and adjust the settings when needed. To do this, I first remove the original USB header. It's glued down at the base, but the glue's easy to cut through with a small sharp knife. I'm replacing it with a short USB micro male to mini female cable. This will allow me to use the same cables that I use for my GoPro and my gimbal, instead of needing a USB extension cable like before. The cable can be mounted at the base of one of the arms, on the bottom half of the shell. First, use a cutting wheel or other type of saw to cut a channel in the cable, about a sixth of an inch from the end. Then pick your spot and mark the shell with the approximate width of the trim down connector. 
Then start to cut the shell to wedge the cable into place. Slowly cut and test fit until the channel in the cable is flush with the shell. You may want to replace the glue at the base of the micro connection, however the end installed into the shell should require no adhesive to stay in place. To begin installing the PMU V2, we first need to solder the power leads into place. The best place to do this is where the battery cable is attached to the main board. Next, remove the existing X3 connector from the NASA controller, which can be tucked away and is no longer needed. Instead, plug in the X3 connector from the PMU V2, followed by the EXT cable in place of the GPS. The PMU V2 is now installed. We can now plug in the IOSD into the PMU's CAN bus port. After figuring out where I'm going to fit the two devices in the shell, I move on to the last step, the IOSD's wiring harness. Plug it into the OSD and run it out of the bottom of the shell through one of the grommeted holes. Prepare the ends of the cables to be spliced with the new ones, and then cut your old video cable that plugs into your camera leading to your transmitter in half. Then, using the markings on the IOSD as a guide, splice the yellow and brown video in wires to the end that plugged into your camera, and the orange and brown video out wires to the end that plugs into your transmitter. Some older versions of the NASA software will need to be updated before the OSD works, but otherwise the device is now installed. Be sure to plug the GPS cable into the PMU V2 before closing, and then put everything back together. And that first flight took place on a very windy day, so the footage is not the best, but it was definitely cool to see the IOSD working on my Phantom. Um, it's just a completely different experience to be able to just sit there, stare at the monitor, and be a lot more confident about how far away you are, how high up you are, seeing those numbers kind of change as you're moving around and as you're moving the sticks, and sometimes, especially if there's wind going on, you're not exactly sure how fast you're moving when you're going full throttle in any direction. So it's just a much better experience to, to be able to stare at the screen and not feel like you have to continuously look up. You should definitely have a spotter in these sort of urban environments, by the way, um, to make sure nothing weird's going on and make sure nothing's behind you if you're flying backwards uh, or making sure you're not getting in any sort of weird trouble. But um, it really is, once you have the IOSD working, it's a lot, lot easier just to fly by the monitor. One of my favorite things too, by the way, is going to be the home point marker, which I noticed the first time I flipped around after I took off. You, you see this big diamond kind of dancing around where you took off. It's just such a really <laughs> reassuring kind of thing to know is there. 
um, particularly when you're a few hundred meters away and you're in a location that you don't always film at or that you don't know that well from the ground and also from the, you know, from the air, it's sometimes hard to keep track of stuff and know exactly where you are. But once you see the diamond kind of dancing around, it's a lot easier to just be flying, kind of keep an eye on your battery life and know about when you have to just start turning around and trying to find that diamond and just heading towards it. So that's definitely one of my favorite features of the IOSD. And um, there's a lot more features too that I haven't really even looked into that much yet. One of them is the fact that you can plug in through USB um, into your computer into the, directly into the IOSD and then you can see a bunch of flight information. That can be really helpful with setting up your Phantom and also just learning about how you're flying it that I wanna look into. And I also might be doing another one of these USB mods to the other side so I can do that super easily. But um, definitely a great, great upgrade. And I, if, you, if you have a working FPV setup, I would say a definite must on the iOSD. So um, now my biggest problem is actually this situation, I think. Uh, in addition to this monitor not being a very good monitor, it's like a five or six year old wireless television monitor. Um, you can see it's got the transmitter Velcro to the back plus the battery and everything like that. This is not ideal. Uh, I'm at the point where I've had like probably one out of 10 flights at this point where I go out to the field and I notice I've forgotten some important piece. Sometimes it's one of these things, so this is definitely not helping. And so what I want to get is a proper FPV monitor, which is gonna have all this stuff built into a monitor that's much more set up to be viewed outside and everything. And so what I did is I actually purchased two, and they are the uh, very well-reviewed and FPV favorite High Sight Black Pearl right here, as well as what looks like a really great Lilliput FPV monitor. And I'm gonna be comparing the two of these in my next video and picking one to keep. Uh, and that's going to be coming up next, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, that's going to be about the end of this video. Make sure you are subscribed and head over to facebook.com slash willyoudesign and make sure you like the page. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching.